In Castlevania Symphony of the Night, there exists many alternate ways to play through the game. Some of the most well-known secrets added by the developers would be the game's luck mode code, which starts you with very low stats, excluding a very high 99 luck stat. Some other well-known ways to play through the game would be through alternate characters, such as playing as Richter or Maria in other versions of the game. These alternate characters completely change the flow and balance of the game, allowing players to explore the same castle, but experience it differently with brand new mechanics. But what if I told you there's another secret name code that is by far the most unique and most mysterious of all? The Axe Armor name code starts the game off as normal, except the player has the Axe Armor in their starting inventory. You might remember seeing this little guy if you've ever played the Axe Armor mode in Portrait of Ruin, but this version has vastly different mechanics. Soten's Axe Armor has a faster run speed than Alucard, a strong overhead swing, and he is immune to grab-type attacks. This is most likely to prevent glitches or softlocks from happening. And with all this in mind, I wanted to see if it was even possible to beat Castlevania Symphony of the Night while only wearing the Axe Armor the entire time. The first thing we need to do is enter the Axe Armor name code and get started. We start in the game's prologue, playing as Richter, and our goal is to defeat Dracula. There's no way to skip this section, so let's just speedrun through it real quick. Two Hydra Storms later, and we can now start our adventure as Alucard. Once we gain control of Alucard, the first thing we must do is take off all of our clothes and equip the glorious Axe Armor that will become our best friend throughout the entirety of this run. Walking with haste up to the first Warg enemy, you will see that the Axe Swing is able to kill them in a single hit. Not bad. Much better than trying to kill them with Alucard's fists. Maybe this challenge won't be too difficult at all. Our next major hurdle is going to be the Zombie Hallway. After defeating the first two wargs in this room, the lights turn on in the castle and zombies begin to spawn randomly. These zombies spawn completely randomly and with little warning. You need godly reaction times in order to walk at full speed and dispatch the zombies as they spawn in. Taking damage while wearing the axe armor knocks us back with a long and annoying animation. If not careful, it is easy to get overrun by the infinitely spawning zombies and be put into a vortex combo. After making it through the zombie hallway, we now have the cave room with the bats to take care of. Let's be careful not to fall down to the lower section with the infinitely spawning mermen. I do not want to deal with that right now after just putting up with the zombie hallway. After carefully making our way through the secret cave, all we have to do is jump up to the... Uh, um... Y yeah, no, this is impossible. 